What's wrong with you? Oh, how was your day, Damien? My day, Tanya? My day was amazing. Thanks for asking. I got another fucking note from a job today. Actually, two jobs. Two jobs said fuck you. Oh, and on the way home, I little running with 5 0. They got a little free spirit with their hands. And my face. I was wondering why you look like that. But you didn't ask. Because you don't care. I care. Yeah, right. It's just... It's always something up with you. Always. And I guess I'm just trying to figure out when things are going to turn around. Turn around. Yeah. Oh, really? That's how you feel? What's going on, beautiful people? It's your boy here, Wesley from West the Critic here on YouTube, the one place on the World Wide Web where I give my honest opinion on all things cinema. If this is your first time seeing me, definitely follow me on all my social medias, Twitter and Instagram, at West the Critic. Also, if you're seeing this on my main YouTube channel, A Connection TV, Instagram and Twitter is at A Connection TV. Do me a favor, leave a comment and subscribe to this channel because I'm trying to grow my cinema channel, West the Critic. But yeah, I do all my stuff typically on A Connection TV. I've been doing YouTube since 2005, so I've been in the game for a very long time. And I do want to give a shout out to my actors and actresses that I work with. I'm an indie filmmaker, okay? And I have my own streaming online streaming platform uh, comprised of original productions. Uh, many of them are produced and directed and written by me and I also share the platform with some other indie artists. It's called watchactv.com. The clip that you saw before this video started was entitled F U, AKA F U. I can't say it on YouTube without getting censored and banned. But I won at a film festival for that short film. So definitely check it out. I would really appreciate it. And let me know what you think of my platform, right? So I follow a little bit of stuff on social media. You know, I'm a reviewer, not a reporter. I don't go really in depth on things. But when I surf and I come across certain things, it piques my interest. Now, the neighborhood talk is one that I follow and they always seem to like be hit by IG, right? And I saw some rumblings of Chloe Bailey in a new show or a movie. I didn't know what it was at the particular time and people were making mention of the fact that she has a, a sex scene in the show or whatever. And they're like all the rave about it because she's getting blown out from the back. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> in my mind, Cause I know y'all, y'all, y'all think I hate Chloe Bailey and I hate, you know, uh, Haley Bailey and I don't. I'm just very opinionated. Okay, I'm a Leo. In my mind, I'm like, I could see that. You know what I'm saying? Because she's very, very sexual in her music and what she says that she wants from dudes. So her getting hit from the back ain't really like, oh my God, she's not the Disney princess out of the two. Okay, and that's just no shade. It just it is what it is. She's not. So when I heard that, I was like, all right, why do people care? Because it's not a big deal. She's an actress. She can do that. Like, that's what actors do. That's how Haley Berry got her first Oscar. Let's be clear. And so in my mind, I'm like, let me check this out. Then I don't know where I heard somebody mentioning the show again. And I was like, let me go check out Prime. Let me see what's going on on Prime. So I watched Swarm, okay? And usually when I do my reviews, right, this is how it's going to go. I'm going to talk about the actors. I'm going to talk about the script. I'm going to give an overall rating, okay? And then after that, I'm going to, you know, talk about the film or the show, and it's going to be spoiler territory. So I'll preface that by saying, hey, you've been warned, all right? So let's talk about the actors. Let's talk about uh, Damson Idris. Now, I don't know if he's related to anybody. I don't, know, I don't know who this man is, okay? But he's a great actor. I believe that he was a punk. I believe that he was a jerk. 
He sold the sex scene. They should have got a back shot so I could see the back booty. We see all of Chloe's booty, but I don't see none of his booty. And I'm like, that would have been nice, you know, for a brother like me to see. I wanted to see the back booty of Idris, and they didn't show it. So I'm a little bummed out, okay? Then we get to Dominique Fishback. I'm going to save Chloe for last. We get to Dominique Fishback. I don't know this woman. I don't know what she's ever been in. I'm not really, I don't really care. I'm not going to do that much research, okay? But she's a great actress in this role playing Dre. And in my mind, I'm like, what is wrong with this chick? Why is she like off? Why is she like, like the last leaf on the tree that won't fall? Like something's off with her. Like, I don't, I don't know what is going on. Like why is she, she seems like she's high all the time, but she's not. And I don't know if I missed it in the show, the first episode, but I'm trying to figure out what is her condition, because I'm confused. <laughs> and if she doesn't have a condition, okay, I guess. But I'm a bit confused by her, but she's a great actress. Then we get to Chloe. I'm saving Chloe because y'all think I'm a y'all think I'm a clown her. We I'm gonna save Chloe. Chloe, Chloe, no, there's how many more? There's that it's just them in the first episode. Cause I'm gonna do an I'm gonna do an episodic review of this thing. Chloe Bailey. Hey, Chloe, your fans think I don't like it, girl, but I love you, okay? And I, I support do it. I support everything you do. I just want you to put on some clothes and stop, you know, being overpowering on every little thing you do. That's all. That's all my only gripe. But Chloe Bailey is a very talented young woman, okay? A great actress, and she does a great job. And Swarm, she didn't overdo it. She played the role, and I'm so proud of her. Maybe that had a lot to do with the director, Donald Glover, or whoever directed the first episode. But I'm, I love her in this. And she's good in this, okay? She's great, matter of fact. And I'm just, the whole entire cast, Great. I freaking love this first episode. Mind you, I really don't, I'm not even in the mood to do this review. I'm only doing this review because I wanted to do an episodic, uh, you know, uh, review of the whole thing. But the show is so good that I want to go back and watch episode two and not really worry about doing these reviews because these reviews take a lot of work. But it's so good, okay? Let's talk about the script. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. The script is phenomenal. I have so many questions. <laughs> I have so many questions. It didn't really dawn on me because the thing was like, this is not fiction. Whoever this show depicts or, or, or favors or whatever, it's intentional. I'm like, okay. So y'all talking about somebody. Who y'all talking about? I mean, it's called Swarm. And as soon as they put Naja on the screen, I'm like, they talking about Beyonce? I'm like, oh, Swarm, Beehive. Okay, is that what we're trying to do? And then in my mind, I'm like, ooh, why is Chloe in this? <laughs> I'm like, why is Chloe in this? Why? They clearly they talk about Beyonce. Clearly they talk about members of the Beehive. Why is Chloe in this? Because Chloe's her own artist and Chloe can do whatever the hell she wants to do. This is her way of saying she's not a part of the Beehive, even though we know she is, because that's her boss. But I'm like shocked. And she got she got her booty clapped in a movie that's clearly talking about the Beehive and Beyonce. I'm like, wow, but I'm here for all of it, Chloe. You do your butt thing, girl, because you did your thing now. And I, and I wouldn't have got my booty clapped. I would have been clapping Idris's booty, but girl, I get it because he's cute. Okay, so the script is great. The actors are phenomenal, and I would give the first episode of Swarm an eight. The reason why I would give it an eight is because I don't want to do this damn review. I want to continue watching the ass shit. And now it's going to take my whole Friday away because I want to continue watching the ass shit. It's really, really good. The reason why it's not a 10 is because I didn't get that back shot of Idris. And there's not enough. Like, I guess I have to watch the rest of the series to see what the hell is wrong with Dre. Okay. And, and why are people dying so quickly? Like, what is this whole show about? Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's not, for me, it's not a 10 because it's just not enough explained for me. I, I don't like, you know, finding stuff out later on and it's revealed. I don't know. It, I don't know. It kind of aggravates me because the whole episode, I'm like, what is, what? I don't know. Uh, oh, what? What? I don't, it's, oh, I, I hate doing that. But it's really, really good. And, you know, Dominique Flashback, Fishback, is 
is a great job if she's the anchor of this. And that's what made me tune in. I follow Chloe Bailey, even though y'all think I don't like her. I follow Chloe Bailey on her Instagram and she posted about Swarm. That was the last thing that was just like, oh, okay, let me go check this out. Great job, Chloe Bailey. Great job, uh, Damson Idris. Great job, Dominique Fishback. Great job, Donald Glover and Janine Neighbors. Now, an obsessed Houston-based fan goes to increasingly violent lengths for her favorite R&B singer. You know, uh, IMDb gives it a 7.8 out of 10. I gave it an 8. 79% for Rotten Tomatoes. That's a fresh tomato. It's really good. Y'all should check it out. Now I'm about to break it down, get into a spoiler. And it's not really going to be like nitpicky spoiler. It's going to be like, as a matter of fact, spoiler kind of review time. To, I want to just talk about it. Y'all ready? Here we go. I'm about to get into it. Now, if you ain't seen it, turn this part of the video off and then come back if you want to laugh or so. I don't even know how if I'm going to be that comedic in this, but let's talk about it. So right off the rip, we, we get edits and flashes of, you know, Dre looking at Nyjah, she looking at social media, Nyjah's tour, the Evolution tour, it sounds like Beyonce to me, the Evolution tour is coming, okay, and she wants to get tickets, now out of nowhere, Dominique, I mean, uh, uh, Dre got a credit card, she got approved for something, I don't know how she getting approved for something, she living in this raggedy ass apartment that they in, and, and clearly in the projects or the hood, maybe the hood is of all hoods, okay, because the rug is dirty, they, they, you know, they living, they not living well. And, 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 and just like the beehive, she go ahead and spend her money on, on these tickets. And she, the, the couch don't even, I mean, the, the mattress ain't even a mattress. It's a tress. Does she not even sleep on a mattress? She's sleeping on a tress minus the mat. Cause when, 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 uh, Andrew sat on the thing, the thing went six feet down. I'm so confused. But anyway, I'm watching it. Automatically I get cinema, cinematography. Daddy could never. The reading could never. I got Donald Glover knew what the hell he was doing. I got cinematography watching this. I said, why couldn't he, why couldn't he partner with the director of the, the Nanny and the director of the reading that Monique Parker was in? Why couldn't he, why couldn't he partner with them and show them how to do that damn movie? Immediately I'm sold because this cinematography is there. She go ahead, she buy the tickets, she walk in and she see uh, Chloe getting a booty clap by Idris. And I'm waiting to see Idris' booty, but I don't see Idris' booty, so I'm already annoyed. But Idris looking at Dre, Dre just, just stuck, looking dumb, watching them have sex. And I'm like, girl, is she about to masturbate? I was so confused. I, I couldn't understand what was about to transpire between this situation because clearly Dre likes being watched. I mean, clearly Dre is a voyeur. And, and Idris likes being watched. And Chloe just got her head in the pillow. But all right, we move past that. She go to the corner store and oh my God, they live in the hood. She go in the corner store and she going to pick up a Frenchies from the corner store. And the Asian talk about, your friend was there, she owe me money. She ain't pay for them uh, banana flavored condoms. <laughs> so she owe me money. She'll be $5. Dre like, I ain't got $5. Well, the girl said, you ain't leaving here. I'm calling the cops. Dre put a foot on the thing. <laughs> Dre put a foot on the thing and said, yeah, here got the money, ho. She go back to the house and she got the Frenchies. The Frenchies look like White Castle. Oh my God, they look like White Castle done going out of business. They had to sell everything left they had in the kitchen. <laughs> And Gerard and, and is the chef. He trying to quit. He can't quit, though, because he got to get his last check for the week. That's what the food look like. But then, anyway, they, she go ahead and bring the food down. Idris going to bring his uh, hungry ass up in there sagging. Sagging like the Negroes do. Okay, he going to eat the food that she done bought. Then then uh, Marissa, played by Chloe, come in. They all eating the food. They eating the food this girl done bought with her new credit card. She got and bought the nausea tickets for Marissa and them. And so now she, you know, Chloe like, you ain't hungry? And Dre like, nah. She like, I'll give you half of my sandwich. Why well, I got to get half of this sandwich? This girl just spent $600, $700 on these tickets. I got to spend half on the sandwich? Huh? I'm confused. I'm confused. I'm confused. I don't understand this. I don't understand this. But, okay, whatever. Whatever. Then Marissa get up. She like, oh, I got this gig. I'm doing makeup. You should be proud of me. I'm going to the Grammys next. I'm like, girl, this sounds like she doing makeup at the swap meet. I'm so confused. But she excited and I'm excited for her. 
I'm excited for her. Some way or another, we hear that, uh, you know, Dre is a, a virgin. So says Idris. And, you know, uh, Chloe like, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to tell him that. But and this, and this whole thing, I'm like, how old are these girls? They got to be old enough because they're getting credit cards in the mail. But why are they living like this? I don't understand. Why are they, why they, why are they living like this? And I really don't. Are they friends? Are they sisters? I'm confused. They don't look alike. They don't look alike at all. But, you know, Marissa tells Dre to cover her shift at the swap meet. So she covering the shift at the swap meet or whatever the case may be. And... Girl, I'm, still, I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with Dre. I'm still trying to figure out what is wrong with her. <laughs> Something's off. So there's a couple screws loose up in that dome of hers. And I, they, they didn't say nothing. They, didn't, they just letting her walk like this and live like this and get credit cards. But she, I'm confused. What's wrong with her? Child. <laughs> so... I don't know where. Something goes. Something changed. I'm, I'm losing my mind. They looking... We, oh... Marissa does Dre makeup and she's like, oh, you have a versatile face. You could, you could do anything with this face. And she put on the makeup. I'm like, oh, she do look cute with the makeup on. You know, they hugging each other and embracing each other. I'm like, are they lesbian or is this just sisterly love? But you know, Chloe went to commit suicide before and you can see the scar on her wrist or whatever. And I'm like, oh, oh, the poor baby. Oh, foreshadowing, foreshadowing. This is good, foreshadowing, baby. I'm just realizing it, really. <laughs> With a foreshadow of it all. But you know, Dre sitting there rubbing the, the scar and then she kissing the scar. I'm like, girl, what is wrong? They used to bone. I'm so confused. I don't understand what's happening here. I just, I really don't. I don't get it. Um, but trying to get in the bed, they obsessed with Nyjah. They can't wait to see Nyjah. They got the Nyjah tickets or whatever the case may be, child. And, um, they smoking or whatever, and Dre don't smoke, nor she drink. Which I'm confused with what happened. Never mind, I'm going ahead of myself. So they wake up, and Naj is late. Uh, no, Dre is late because she was supposed to help Marissa up at the swap meet to cover her shift for the t-shirt the making store. And so, um, you know, she walk in, and when she walk in, I thought she was on a period. I couldn't understand why her legs was clenched like that while she was walking. I was so confused. I was like, why are they looking at her like that? But then when she came up close and she looked like she got beat up, I was like, girl, that's why they looking at her. She look rough. Child, they get here, they get, uh, she get to the store, she go ahead and watch the store, but Marissa going to swap meet because she got the makeup gig. Out of nowhere, um, homeboy Idris come walking up, talking about, hey, uh, come walk with me. And I'm like, what? The girl at the kiosk at the swap meet making these shirts and you want her to leave the kiosk? to go walloping around with you. It's something just off to me anyway, because when Dre was boning on Chloe looking at, um, uh, I mean, when Khalid was boning on Chloe looking at Dre, he was looking a little too hardcore with it. And I'm like, why he want this slow girl? I'm so confused, well, what's going on here? And you know, it just it is what it is. You know, men can be creeps. So she go and leave the kiosk unattended that she's supposed to be watching, and she go walk in the mall uh, with this Neanderthal. And I guess he looking for cologne, uh, perfume to buy for Marissa. Come to find out, he hitting on her. Talk about, you know, you don't have to be a virgin for much longer. I can help you out of that. And he goes and lean in to kiss. And in my mind, I said, if Dre kissed this man, I'm over this show. Because I just hate when they, I hate when creators depict women of all people, but just us in general, like us in general as like pussies, like punks, like low down, dirty. I was like, is this another Queen and Slim with a lesbian producer created that trash ass film and had the black people go against their own kind in that movie? I can't remember her name, but I ain't watching another thing she has to. I'm so glad she ain't create this shit here because I wouldn't have watched it. But no, she doesn't do a queen and slim. She protects her friends, uh, her interests, and got her friends back. And she swerves the boy and turns to walk away looking slower than ever. And I'm like, yeah, she better go ahead and turn your slow ass around and, and walk off on him as he try to kiss you. You better tell Marissa when you get your ass home. And clearly when she get back to the swap meet kiosk, the swap meet kiosk done been jacked. And there's this woman talking about can she get a, a, a refund because her friend, her boy bought a, uh, you know, a horrible shirt. Baby, it was, this show was so good. This show was so good. This show was so good. Clearly, 
Uh, Dre ain't got no car. I don't even know how she got. To, she caught the bus. Dre ain't got no way home because it's too late. I guess the, the mall closed. But the girl that was, I don't, I don't, I couldn't understand that. She, they work in the kiosk. But the manager, oh, maybe the manager was called back in because the store was robbed or whatever the case may be. So she came. But Marissa go pick up, pick up Dre. They get home. And and Marissa started talking about, oh, I'm about to leave. I'm about to go stay the night over uh, uh, Khalid's. And Dre like, no, don't stay the night. He's no good now. He's no good. I done told you now. He's no good, Massa. Sounded like one old slave. Sounded like, sounded and looking like Whoopi Goldberg in that movie where she was sweating in the cornfields. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And so... You know, uh, Chloe like, nah, I'm leaving. And, and and Dre like, no, he wanted to sleep with me, sir. I said, what'd she say? <laughs> I said, what'd she say? No, I don't think you understand what I said. He was trying to sleep with me. You heard me? So yeah, you can't leave. Uh, you, uh, what am I gonna do without you? I said, girl, this girl acted the same. She is. She acted the same. And so did Chloe. Chloe, went, Chloe, they was going back and forth. Chloe said, no, I'm leaving. I'm going to be with my man that wanted to sleep with you. I don't care what you say. Long story short, child. Child, the man was cheating on, cheating on Chloe. And then Chloe came back, was looking for, looking for Dre. But Dre went to the club and found her a white piece of feet, a white piece of feet, a white piece of meat, and, and was fed strawberries with a penis on the bowl. At the, at the, the very next day, child, a mess. That penis was sloshed up against that bowl. And I didn't see her try none of them strawberries. But here's my thing. If she don't drink and she don't smoke, how come she don't remember nothing? Did all of a sudden she drink and smoke? I was so confused. Did she just say, F it, I'm going to do what Marissa does? And I'm going to go find a man and sleep with him? I'm so confused. We don't get none of what happened. I don't, I don't, I guess we're supposed to just assume that that's what happened. Child, she get all the phone calls from Marissa. She go home to see Marissa. Marissa ain't moving. In my mind, I'm like, what happened? Did she overdose? What's going on? But she did. She killed herself. Oh, that was so horrible. And in my mind, I'm like, well, what's she about to do? Then we get to a funeral. And I'm like, in my mind, how the hell she afford this funeral? If she living in the trash heaps of Destadil, how she, how she got this rich ass funeral? Apparently the family got money, but they ain't want to give her none when she was alive. Trifling black folk. And then she sit here up here in a nice white dress, makeup on everything. The family wants you to leave. Well, why? Where was the family at? Where the family been all this time? Why was Why was Marissa living in these conditions and she got family? I don't understand, but it's okay. It's the first episode. Maybe I'll find out in the next few ones. I don't know. Child, Dre get kicked out. She go to the house. They done moved all her stuff out the out the uh out the uh state farm. And then you know she texted Marissa cause she crazy. The phone bleep bleep next to her under grocery bags with no groceries in them. And then she go and find Dre. I mean Khalid. And she go to Khalid. Now in my mind I said she better kill him. That's what I said in my mind. She better kill him. She better not be that slow that she gonna sleep with him. Because she missing Marissa that badly. I said, she better not be a queen. They, they better not queen and slim her. They better not queen and slim her. I forget the broad that the producer that did queen and slim that trash ass movie. Anyway. Come to find out. Donald Glover don't queen and slim her. It looked like that's what's about to happen. Because she rubbing on his kneecap and her back and his back. He saying crying with no tears. Giving me Kerry Washington for days. And I'm like, you know what? She bet not queen and slim this man. And she didn't. It looked like he was about to lean and kiss. He said, you want, you want some tea? In my mind, I thought he was going to like drug her in the tea so he could like, you know, have his way with her or whatever. And I don't know if that's what he was intending on doing because they never emphasized or showcased that. But when Khalid had his back turned to Dre, Dre said, oh, hell no. Dre go bra grab the lamp that I got in my actor's room. It's a, a, a rock, stone rock lamp. The thing heavy, baby. You hit somebody up in the head with that, it's done. So she grabbed that, she come and boom and smash him in. She was so crazy like Joker and, 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 uh, and uh, Harley Quinn combined. She got blood all over her fingers and everything, but she don't care. 
She pan and hand and pan and hand, and she need to go in the refrigerator to get some food because she hungry. But her hands are filled with blood, and she go in and grab the apple pie or the cherry pie and put her bloody hand in her mouth with the blood and the cherry pie. What is this? I don't know, but I want to watch episode two. This shit is really good. The nanny and the reading could take a message from this film that Donald Glover and Janine Neighbors produced or created. I hope y'all behind members ain't really like this in real life, but I have a feeling that y'all are. Anyway, leave your comments below. Let me know if you want me to continue doing a review of all the episodes per episode, or do you want me to just get to the end of it and watch it? Either way, I'm gonna watch every episode because it's really good. I'm so proud of Chloe. I'm so proud of Damson Idris, and I'm so proud of Dominique Fishback. They did an amazing job. And shout out to Rory Culkin for showing us. Is that Macaulay Culkin? Is that? I don't know. For showing his white pinga on the bowl of the strawberries. Anyway, love y'all for watching. Follow, subscribe, leave comments, subscribe, leave comments. Go to watchactv.com. Leave a comment under FU and let me know that this video sent you. Love y'all.